Okay, so we're looking at part one. And you should look at these objectives. What is it you should be able to do by the end of part one? Remember, your goal isn't, hey, my worksheet's done, so I'm done. Your goal is, have you learned the words, the vocabulary words? Have you practiced summarizing? Can you do it? Can you tell your observations about the text? Um, you know, the difference between an interview and a social studies article. Do you know how to work with a subtopic web? Have you practiced taking notes? Can you do a research report? Can you compare and contrast? Can you ask for and give information? Do you know how to use will to express the future? Do you know what a timeline is? Do you understand what a timeline signifies, what it represents? And future images and in inventions. Are you familiar with them? Can you talk about them? Are you able to research them? Okay, and notice the academic content, social studies, life in the future, comparison of Earth and Mars. One thing I like about Shining Star is that you learn about, um, you're learning about topics that are going to come up in other classes for you. So we're trying to build your background knowledge and build your vocabulary. So please, don't cheat. Learn the material. Life in the Future is a social studies article. It tells what some scientists think life will be like in the future. It is nonfiction, which means it uses facts to describe what will be happening years from now. So let's make some connections. Look at the pictures of a telephone. Yeah, that's a telephone. A car. Some children, and an airplane from the past. So things are different now, aren't they? So of course, things will also be different in the future. So compare the telephone, car, clothes, and airplane with those of today. How are they similar? How are they different? How do you think telephones, cars, clothes, and airplanes will be different in the future? Now, these are not just questions for you to go, uh-huh, sure, yeah. No, you need to answer these questions. So how are you going to compare? One way is with a Venn diagram. That's a pretty common way to compare. So let's say you wanted to do the telephone. Okay. How would you compare the telephone now and the telephone that you see in this picture now and then okay so pick one of these okay and I'd like you to think about how is it different how are they the same here are your four choices again telephone car children airplanes where do I want to see this? You have a blank page um, on your homework packet. I'd like to see that there. Question two. How do you think telephones, cars, clothes, and airplanes will be different in the future? Okay, so this won't be probably a Venn diagram. It would be better off represented as a T-chart. So let me move this up a little bit. So what would a T-chart look like? Okay, so let's say we have telephones, cars, clothes, children's clothes, and airplanes. What do you think they will be like in the future? And then write your ideas. And obviously you're going to write out the word. I'm just doing it quickly for you. And where will you show this? That's right, on the blank page of your packet. I would ask you to put it in your journal, but I've learned that some of you don't do it when I ask you to, so I'd like to see it. OK, 
Here we're going to finish up this preview lesson by looking at vocabulary. And I had an interesting experience where a, a student said to me, well, how do I do this? How do I answer these workbook questions about these words? I don't know these words. And I said, did you look at the page that gives the vocabulary lesson? And this person said, no, I didn't look. Uh, this is unit six, okay, which means we've done units one, two, three, four, and five. So there's no excuse for that. You should know by now where to find the vocabulary words. Okay, I guess I'm a little bit grumpy, but I'll continue now. Vocabulary. Read these sentences. Use the context of the sentence to figure out the meaning of the red words. Use a dictionary to check your answers. So what does this tell you that you are supposed to do in order to learn these words? Are you just supposed to read through the sentences with me now? No. You are supposed to use a dictionary and you're supposed to do what? You're supposed to write down the word artificial. What does it mean? And how do you say it in your language? You're supposed to write down the word frontier. And what does it mean? And how do you say it in your language? You're responsible for learning these words, for knowing these words. And the only way to do that is to think about the words, to make connections between what you already know and what you're learning here, and especially to make connections between your first language and the English word. So let's look at these again. Artificial, say it, artificial, frontier, frontier, mass-produced, mass-produced, population, population, Robots. Robots. I like robots. I just bought a robot vacuum cleaner. Very cool. Traffic jams. Traffic jams. And let's read the sentences. Doctors sometimes use artificial hearts to replace diseased hearts. Outer space is sometimes called a frontier because we know so little about it. Space, the final frontier. Right, if you know Star Trek. Cars are no longer made one at a time. They are mass produced. The population of Earth will increase greatly. There will be billions more people in the next 100 years. Human beings won't need to do dangerous work in the future because robots will do the work. Traffic jams are the result of too many cars on the road. Okay, question. Can you read these sentences fluently? Yes? Do you understand what the red words mean? Okay, until you've done that, you need to be studying and practicing. R rewind the tape. <laughs> it's not a tape, right? Rewind this video and go through the sentences again. It's your responsibility to learn these words and what they mean. Okay, move this out of the way. So summarizing, the focused reading strategy. Why summarize? It helps you remember important information in a text it also helps you check your understanding. You have to check your own understanding to make sure you get it. Make sure you understand what you're reading. When you summarize, you retell the text's main ideas. A summary is always much shorter than the text. When you write a summary, use some words from the text and some of your own words. As you choose the information you want to summarize, keep in mind your reason for reading the text. 
Before you summarize, ask yourself these questions. What happened? What are the main ideas? Okay, so hello, we're looking at life in the future. Um, always look at your directions. Here's your directions. Preview and skim the text and set your purpose for reading. Then, as you read more carefully, write a sentence or two after each section, summarizing the main ideas of that section. Okay, so you're being asked to take notes and summarize each section. You may show this to me on notebook paper attached to your packet for the week. Or if you have room on the blank page in your packet, you can do it there. You also have one worksheet page that has you practice with the summarizing. Okay, so let's look here, please. We're going to skim. Preview and skim. What does that mean? Hmm, I see an interesting timeline. Let's see, what does it show? So here's 2009, when this book was written. 2011, okay, so firefighting robots can find and rescue people. Cool. Clothes that become cooler or warmer depending on the outside temperature. Ooh, I like that. Robotic pets. Ah. Uh, Telephone calls between speakers of different languages translated in real time. That's actually possible now, right? Humans traveling to Mars. <laughs> that would be cool. Cars that drive themselves. Okay, this, this has already happened. Google has an automated car. Uh, it's not an automated highway, though. Okay, artificial lungs kidneys, and brain cells. Wow. Underground cities. <laughs> More robots than people in some countries. Okay, that totally reminds me of iRobot, if you've seen that movie. That it's creepy. Fully functioning artificial eyes and legs. Wow. People cured of almost all cancer. That would be awesome. And we have a robot, a robotic dog, an artificial leg. Okay, so I'm looking at life in the future. Okay, this makes sense how things are going to get better. Okay, there's going to be, oh, wow, look at that. What does that tell me? People in billions. In another 100 years, there's going to be 11 billion people. That's a lot more people. So the world is growing, and there will be different kinds of cities in the future. What is this? A model for an apartment building in Tokyo. Whoa. Okay. So as you look through the article, interact with it as you saw me just do. As you heard me just do as well. What does it mean? What are we looking for? Right? What is your response to what you see? And then know that we're going to be writing a sentence or two after each section, summarizing the main ideas. So, the growing world is a section. Future cities is a section. So, I'm sure you've learned this. And if you haven't, you really need to. So, let me show you here. How can you... Set yourself up for summarizing by section. We use something that looks like this, right? Cornell notes. So section one, what's it called? And a sentence, what's it about? Section two, what is it called? And a sentence, summarizing. In your own words, you can use some of the words of the text, but the sentence is your own complete sentence. And this third section, What's it called? And a sentence about it. This is something I expect to see. You may do it on notebook paper. You may do it, if you have room, on the blank page in your packet. Um, 
you may read along with the audio, which will be attached on Schoology, or I'll have you go to listening center stations. Good luck.